Okay. The last two examples, number five and six. Um, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I want to get away from R's and thetas, and I want to get it back to X's and Y's. So, here's what I would do. Um, I would say that secant is like cosine, but it's the reciprocal of cosine. So I could write this as one over cosine of theta, right? So if I'm multiplying that by negative two, it's basically the fraction negative two over cosine theta. Now, if you look at the formulas on the previous page up here at the top, if I want to get to x, all I have to do is get r and cosine theta together. Over here, all I would have to do is multiply on both sides by cosine. Here they would cancel, and this sign would give me r cosine theta. So, cosine theta times the r, cosine theta times this fraction, they cancel, and r cosine theta equals negative 2. So all I have to do is replace r cosine theta with x, and now I have an equation that just has x. So we've changed it from polar into rectangular notation. Okay, and the last example is number 6. This is the hardest one, I think, because it seems like you would do it the same as this one, but not really. It's pretty much impossible to get the r next to the sign because no matter which way you cut it, you're gonna make a fraction out of them. You're not gonna be able to put them right next to each other. So in this case, there's a little trick that you can use. I'm gonna multiply both sides by r, okay? So if I multiply this side by r, I get r squared. If I multiply this side by r, I'm just going to kind of put the r in between the 10 and the sine theta. But if you put it in front, it's no big deal. The reason why I put the r next to the sine theta is, finally, we have an r next to sine theta. Remember what that is from over here? r times sine theta is the same as y. So now I have r squared equals 10 times y. Now the cool thing is on the left, r squared is what? Well, we have something that r squared is in terms of x and y. It's x squared plus y squared. So on the left, I'm gonna change that to x squared plus y squared. Then, generally what we do um, is we don't leave it this way. Um, we try to write it in terms of a circle, um, and that's seems a little unnecessary. All we would have to do is minus the 10y on both sides, but that's really how you begin writing something as a circle. It's almost a circle. The way that we write a circle is that it's like x min plus or minus a quantity squared, whole thing squared, and then plus y plus or minus whole thing squared quantity equals zero or equals some number that the radius squared is. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing now. We're going to try to try to change this so that it looks like a circle because that's actually what it is. So putting it in standard form of a circle is the last step here. All right. So what do we do to put this in the standard form of a circle? We do something called completing the square. We practiced this long time ago. You may not remember. So here's a quick review. You take this B type value. If this was A and B and C, you take your B value, which is in front of your Y here. So it's negative 10. The first step is to cut it in half, which gives you negative 5. The second step is to take that answer and square it, which gives you 25. That's kind of like my side work here. And then that is the number that you add on both sides. You add it here and you add it here. Because whenever we add something to one side of an equation, we have to add it to the other. And then this can be factored into the same binomial. It is y minus 5 times y minus 5. It's supposed to do that. It's supposed to have matching binomial factors there. 
Why? So then we can write it as a standard form of a circle. So the radius of this circle is 5 because this is radius squared. The center of the circle is at 0, 5. And you can see those things when you put it in standard form.